So last week's poll, what you guys voted for was the goldenrod. So I looked up what the actual plant looked like. So I had a better idea of what I needed to make a texture for. So I just went through here for a little bit. Once I did that, I could start working on the texture itself. So I wanted to kind of create something that looked similar to the photos on the internet so I knew that it was going to be kind of like a yellowy color and a lot of the tops were kind of clustered in uh, kind of a yellowy gold uh, shade so I wanted to kind of give it as much impression as the original flower as possible and still give it that kind of grass like look so I started with the top like the stem and then brought it down into um, working on the leaves and uh, some other small parts just to kind of give it some detail and then I could finally make sure that it was centered in the middle of the block and I was ready to bring it into mCrater. Once I created the texture I went into mCrater and I simply duplicated the actual element and then I could start importing the textures. Once the textures were imported, then what I could do is I could start setting up some of the properties. Now I wanted the um, actual flower to have some sort of effect uh, for when you put it into a suspicious stew. So what I wanted to do was uh, kind of configure this. I've never actually used this before, so it was kind of an interesting learning curve for figuring it out. So I decided to figure out what kind of tag that I actually needed it for. Other than that, it was just some minor properties that needed updating so I could basically make sure that it was generating properly and how I wanted it. The next thing that I wanted to try was to kind of figure out how I could basically make the flower pots look a little bit better. I didn't actually test beforehand to see if there was a... Um, if there how the original flowers were actually working but I wanted to adjust the code. On Minecraft Wiki uh, what I found was there is a property under the models uh, section a little bit further down in the list that says uh, shade so I decided to quickly add that. I know a little bit of uh, JSON format so I know how to code it by hand so I just basically set up the property and made sure there was a comma there and we'll be testing this in the actual workspace. Next what I did was import the flower pot model that we just created and then set up the textures for it. The next thing that I needed to do was basically configure the element for the flower pot model and set all the properties up. I then needed to configure the right clicked on the block procedure for the actual thing to make sure that the properties accepted the new flower. Once this was done I basically needed to do the right click on block for the global procedure which uh, allows us to put the flower in the flower pot. And lastly, the last procedure that we needed to update was the when the block is broken one. So when we break it, we can get the drop. Once this was done, I wanted to just kind of figure out what the actual loot table for the flower was. And I basically just set up the first one that I saw. Once I did that, I just basically went in game and tested the actual workspace to see um, if the, everything was basically generating properly and the mechanics worked. And it looks like the actual script for the shading is different. It looks like flower pots actually generally have shading. So I don't know if you guys want the, the flower pots to actually have the shading or not. So if you do, then let me know in the comments and if not then I can basically disable it so it looks like the natural flowers. Once I did that I just wanted to kind of make sure that the uh, right tag was being used so I had to look up the recipe because I didn't know how to make suspicious stew and then I was noticing that it wasn't working so I'm like okay maybe I'm doing it wrong maybe it needs to be in a 3x3 and I looked over what items I could basically test with um, 
Tulip being one of them, so I just gave myself a uh, Tulip and tested it, and it turns out it just doesn't simply work. So, basically trying to figure out what other tags there were, and it turns out we did need that tag kind of anyways. So, I basically added two more, which were for small flowers, and uh, one basically... Uh, happens to be for the breeding mechanics for the bee and the other one is for um the well the original one that we added was for the pollination for the bees and then the one that we needed was the other one the last one that we added so once i had all that uh figured out then i could basically test again so in game i just basically put the recipe together and we did get the fire resistance for 15 seconds. I just wanted to make sure that it lasted 15 seconds. Once this was done, I wanted to just quickly organize the workspace and set up a creative tab. So it was a little bit easier to find all our mod elements because it started getting a little bit busy. So I wanted to just make sure that all the elements that we could put under creative tabs were under the new creative tab that we just created. Um, in advanced, I basically want to say that adding a creative tab early on will save you a lot of time. So make sure to kind of do that uh, near the beginning of your mod so it's easier to manage later on. The last thing that I wanted to do is just make sure that the actual creative tab was in working order. So I basically just uh, killed a witch to get to the dimension and then we were basically just quickly testing to see if it worked um, and we were already in creative so it didn't really matter. So let's go into creative and yes all our blocks and items are here. So if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. Rate the video and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.